Hello, Brian McCarthy here from Bold and Break, and we are going to be doing a bit of a deep dive into redshift sampling, how it works and how you can understand it much better from a technical and mathematical point of view to optimize your scenes better. Now, it, this will get a little bit technical, but I think it's important to note, um, I haven't really given a definitive answer on how sampling works in Redshift in my previous videos. So I think it's a topic that deserves its own video. I wanna really break down very simply how rendering works. The blue splines here are my secondary rays and the red splines see them as the primary rays. The primary rays in Redshift are your unified samples. That's how you wanna define that. They are the samples being fired directly from the camera. Your secondary rays are your more advanced samples where you can add samples to reflection, to refraction, to your ambient occlusion. Okay, so a good way of looking at this is just for now, we're going to say our max samples are four. Okay, so we're firing four rays into the scene. Okay, but on top of that, we're also firing eight reflection samples into the scene. Okay, now what Redshift does essentially is it, it will take the secondary sample and divide it by the max sample and that will equal two. Okay, you have this block of information that Redshift has. It then takes that information, that number two, and Redshift says there are two primary rays per pixel. So it again takes that information. Because it's two primary rays per pixel, let's say for argument's sake, your min is set to one and your max is set to four. This is a unified sample. It multiplies the min by two and the max by two because these are your two primary rays per pixel. And that gives you a threshold of two and eight. Again, another block of information. Let's bracket that off. And then you have your final threshold with redshift works within that is basically the mathematical premise to how redshift works so it's important to know how this works because if you were to go into redshift let's just lock this off here and turn off automatic sampling and let's put this to 16 and our reflection to 8 as the default that is a problem for redshift because then you're dividing eight by 16, which is 0.5. That's half a pixel. Redshift has, doesn't know what to do with half a pixel, so it just rounds it up to one. And that's another step in the rendering process that will create longer renders. So sometimes uh, you'll be using Redshift and you might wonder, oh, why it's meant to be much faster. You know, there's these really fast numbers I see people online. And it's because maybe input information that is maybe confusing Redshift or is just making the render process more taxing for Redshift. So this process uh, also applies to the GI. The rays will get divided by your max amount of samples in your unified sampling. I hope that gives a little breakdown here um, as we move forward and have a look at maybe how, how this works. So I've been asked in previous videos, uh, why do I use numbers in the power two? So what that means is two, four, eight, 16, 32, and so forth. The reason I do that is because it's much easier for the computation to divide those numbers if needed. It's just a good rule of thumb to use numbers in that format of power two. You know, if you're using Octane, if you're using Arnold, you know, Corona engine, whatever it is you're using, even, you know, standard, it's just very divisible numbers because sometimes we mightn't always know what the render engine is doing technically. And it just makes things easier if, you know, there's things going on such as this in the background that we don't know. Okay, we have a scene, very noisy, awful, grotesque, noisy scene. Currently, we're gonna bring this down to two. And we're gonna bring this down to four. Remember what I showed you at the start, eight divided by four is two. Two multiplied by four is eight. So it's keeping the threshold at the overrides. We're gonna start increasing our sample range here. We're gonna first take a screenshot uh, and then we are going to bring this up to eight and see what happens. Okay, how does that look compared to that? Cause you're getting one primary ray. 
when they match you don't really want them matching that's why in my previous videos i've always said keep your overrides much higher than your unified sampling let's bring this up to 64. see what happens here and you are getting less grain okay and bring this up to 128 should get much less great bring this up to 16 which actually we're going to take a screenshot and start to see because the number that is going to come out of this is slightly smaller but you're going to get the same threshold nonetheless okay and we can keep increasing this maybe 32 32 tens to be a decent number to work with that's what i found generally um the only time you're going to be increasing that is for much more complicated uh, projects where you have depth of field motion blur that's maybe something we can explore in later videos but we want to keep things simple so let's bring this up to four so that's a good threshold and we've really cleaned up our grain here so and what's our time 49 seconds 124 214 so we're only adding a second and you can see as we optimize the scene now we want to really pump this up maybe bring it to 512 see what we come to here and it's 2.30, so you're just, again, as I've shown in previous videos, you're just not adding too much render time by pumping up these secondary samples. And they're so useful, and they give you so much control. And you can really start to see in the reflections now, it's there's no real room to increase anything much and get much out of it, um, which is great. Okay, so, I mean, it did take off some more samples, so maybe we can show our samples here, and we can start to see where we're getting the most samples which is great and we haven't even touched our our refraction or our light samples this up now um i would usually just start pumping up the light samples but um because we haven't turned on global illumination we're just going to add more problems so if you intend to use global illumination and you're op starting to optimize your scene i would recommend you switch on quite early because you're going to get more grain you're going to get a lot more grain and we can already see some of that grain what is quite good about this is we're not increasing our reflection grain too much uh, let's take a snapshot of that okay cool let's start pumping this up 64 and you're going to really start to see oh 64 uh, maybe multiply that by 2 and what we're going to do instead of pumping this up any further we're going to go into our lights and it's just to note here this number will be applied by default to all the secondary samples so you're not going to get you know you're not going to get more samples added you have to add them here which is the advantage of this secondary sample menu so it's just going to pump that right up to 515. the main issue is our global illumination so we want to multiply that by four and we should really start to see this clean up multiply that by two and there should be no need for us to increase our max samples anymore here multiply that by two again and it's gonna start to chug a little bit um, which is fine so you can see the improvement over time here to 3.8 and 6 so we've doubled our time there by increasing our brute force rays by quite a bit now uh, what can we do to optimize the render time using what we already know um, with the samples what we can start to look at is this threshold okay so what this does is it basically tells let's have a look where our samples is first it basically tells redshift where to be really really stringent really kind of strict with grain it's maybe just add another zero now it's going to be much longer in calculating the image but it's getting rid of the grain now it's too long but we can play with this value and play with our other values so because the threshold is so low you're going to get a super clean image, but it takes 27 seconds, which is way too long. You can see a huge cleanup in grain. So how can we make things faster? So the first thing we can do is maybe divide our brute force rays by two. Let's see what that does. Um, and that cuts off about 10 seconds, which is solid. OK, optimizing your redshift scene takes time. Just don't throw numbers at it. What else can we do? We could potentially bring up our adaptive threshold to three here. Let's see what 
that does for us. So we're getting a bit of grain back into the scene, but not enough to be super disappointed with 10 seconds. So that's another eight seconds off your render time. So 18, 27. So it's good to go up, get a high render time, and then work your way back down and try to filter out as much grain as you can as you filter your way back down. Yes, there's still a little bit of grain that could be cleaned up, some aliasing there, but this video is less about just perfecting the render. I, you know, I could be here all day tweaking little bits to get this correct, but this is more about showing you how to kind of build your way towards a more optimized scene because sometimes there are things in your scene and if they're not perfect it just doesn't matter it might be in the camera for one shot and then you move on and it's not really noticeable so you can take liberties with certain certain areas of your scene which is again why a lot of animation studios tend to use redshift because it's set up for that that purpose and that control Please let me know in the comments below if you understood this video, if it made sense. It can be a little bit difficult to kind of get this information uh, and compact it into a small video where you can understand this. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, subscribe, comment, all those good things. And we'll be back with more videos soon.